Hi, I'm Randy Reed, editor of the Edison Report, and we call this series our Light Fast Education Series. And we're here to give you the maximum amount of education in the minimum amount of time. Today, I am joined by Rushi Kumar, the VP of Engineering for DMF Lighting. Rushi, welcome. Thank you, Randy. Thank you for having me. And we're here to talk about Dolly. Can you give our audience a brief overview of what Dolly is? Uh, so Dolly is really just a simple lighting control protocol. So, you know, what that means is it's a predefined set of commands to control lighting fixtures. Uh, so as a triac dimming, phase dimming, which everyone is familiar with, instead of changing the amount of power going to the fixture, we send explicit commands to tell it to do something. Uh, as with zero to 10, you send a control voltage. With Dali, again, you send a specific command to tell it to go to a level, to raise, to lower, to change color temperature. How does the installation change with Dolly compared to zero to 10 volt? So that's really where the big difference is. Dolly uses the same type of wiring as zero to 10 volt. So you'll have your mains conductors, your hot neutral and ground going to each fixture, and you'll have two additional wires that are for communication. The difference is how it gets zoned. With zero to 10, you're physically zoning each of the lighting circuits by running a separate wire for every lighting zone back to a dimmer or a dimmer output. With Dali, you run the same set of wires to all the fixtures on the Dali network. So what's the, what are the basic system limits when designing a Dali system? There are only a couple of really uh, hard rules to follow. One is the number of fixtures that can be on a Dali loop or a Dali network. And that's 64 fixtures. The next rule is really the number of zones of control. So basically, those 64 fixtures on a DALI output need to be assigned to one of 16 different zones, and the zones are what get controlled. So each DALI output is essentially a 16-channel dimmer. What are some applications that would benefit the most by considering DALI? So there's, there's really a lot of different applications that can benefit from Dali, both residential and commercial. Uh, but ultimately, the real power comes in when you have a lot of small zones, right? Um, so lots of small zones mean you can really benefit from the savings in wiring and installation and setup. Uh, the other area that Dali really um, brings benefit is, you know, color tuning. With traditional dimming, you're really left with just adjusting the brightness. With Dali, you now have the option to do more. And then finally, the applications that can really benefit are in areas where the cost of running cable is extremely high. So when you have to run conduit at long distances, that can be a significant portion of the cost for an install. So what is the difference between Dolly 2, which we're hearing a lot of, and the old version of Dolly? There's a lot of small differences between Dolly 2 and the original Dolly. Dolly, you know, that came out 30 plus years ago was really focused on fluorescent ballasts. And so the command set that they defined was for fluorescent lighting. Uh, since then, with LEDs, a lot has changed. So what DALI 2 did, the biggest benefit is the introduction of commands to support tunable white lighting. That is the, the primary uh, benefit of DALI 2 versus DALI. And that's what is making DALI 2 become very popular now. You know, DALI has been slow to pick up in the U.S., uh, historically, you know, really for 30 years. But now with this Dolly 2, things are going to move a lot faster. Do you agree? Yes. I mean, this is this is just one more reason that people are looking at Dolly. What are the pros and cons of going to Dolly versus DMX? So that's that's a, a, a very common question. And they've both been, you know, in the lighting industry for many years. Uh, they are both very good for what they are intended for. So DMX was originally developed for theatrical lighting. It is a simple protocol uh, that is very high speed. So you can do a lot of dynamic effects, whether it's chase sequences and so on, where you need speed and you need a lot of fixtures being controlled in unison. The downside of DMX is the restriction on the wiring you need to abide by very, very strict rules in terms of the type of wire and how it's run. So you need shielded wire, 
twisted wire. You need to run it in a daisy chain format and you need to terminate at the end. And that's always been an issue for you know, electricians and so on, you know, installing DMX through uh, residential and commercial applications. DALI, on the other hand, is a much slower protocol, but it's very forgiving in terms of how you install it. So you do not need any special wire. You can use standard 18 gauge or 16 gauge wire. DMX is always considered class two communication. And what that means is you can't mix those control wires in the same conduit or cable or splice box as your 120 or 277 volts. You have to keep them separated. DALI, on the other hand, is recognized as class one wiring. So you can run those DALI communication wires in the same jacket or conduit and splice box as your 277 volts, and you're not going to have an issue from a code compliance perspective. And that makes a huge difference. You mentioned that the DALI was not fast, but it's fast enough for architectural lighting, correct? Correct. It, it is fast enough for architectural lighting. The only um, guidance is in terms of system design. So when uh, systems are being designed, they have to specify fixtures to be controlled as part of groups or zones and not attempt to control every fixture individually. What kind of fixtures should our audience look for when specifying a dolly fixture? As with all fixture specification, there's, there's a lot that goes into it. And DALI is just you know one more control mechanism. Uh, but really with the migration from analog dimming to digital dimming, the complexity increases significantly. Not only the complexity of designing the system and installing it and then maintaining it afterwards. Um, so really what they need to look at is an overall system that's going to be simple to maintain years down the road. When they're dealing with fixture maintenance, they need to um, have a plan of how they're going to handle that. It, you know, It's no longer as simple as just changing a light bulb. They actually have to reconfigure the settings within the, the driver or the fixture that they replace. One of the things that DMF that we pride ourselves on is really making that maintenance process simple. You know, we implemented a means where via a very simple phone app, you could read all the settings out of a fixture and inject them into a fixture just like you would with uh, Apple Pay or something else. Do you see Dolly, speaking of the future, as the control method? of the future? I guess like like most new technology, it's never the, the end game. DALI is an essential tool for um, a lighting designer. Existing lighting control means, whether it's phase dimming or zero to 10, they're always gonna serve a, a purpose, but really DALI adds to what they can do and it should be used in those areas um, that will benefit. The one trend that's definitely there is you know this ever increasing cost of labor and the ever increasing cost of scarce uh, materials, whether that's copper, conduit, and so on. And then on the flip side, you have this uh, constant increase in the processing power of very low cost devices. So you're getting more intelligence in devices. And so what the trend will be is this migration away from uh, high labor costs and simple devices to more complex devices in order to drive the labor and install costs down. Rushi, as we wrap up, do you have any closing comments? Um, really just to say that we're really working hard to proliferate and bring uh, DALI and Tunable White to, to more applications out there. Well, Rushi, thank you for sitting down with me and for giving our audience this very brief but thorough overview on DALI. Thank you, Randy.